Hi there, everybody, and welcome to Tea Tuesday. I'm looking for my tea. Here is some sweet tea, just regular old sweet tea, nothing special. Comes in the little packets. I bought 10 in a packet at Walmart for like $1.64. Oh, so good. Uh, I just got home. I put another 85 miles on my car. I started out 4.30 this morning, and it's almost 1.30. I had to take my dad shopping, and then I had to take my parents to a funeral. And then I had a little quick errand, and now I am here at home. So tomorrow is a very busy day for me, and today. So I figured I should do this right away. So I want to say thank you, Kathy, from Kathy's Favorite Things in Life with Patty. Patty, this is an open collaboration. You can have hot tea, cold tea, formal tea, or informal tea. That's right. Um, I'll put everything in the description box below. Just use hashtag Tea Tuesday, and I'll put it down. It's a wonderful collab, and why don't you all go over and see how everybody's doing. I'm doing my best to try to get people in to watch videos, but it's been kind of crazy for me, but you all know what that's like. So I'll give you more of an update on Ray after tomorrow we see the surgeon. Um, yeah, so let's get going on. Don't be silly, Mr. Twiddle. Still waiting on my books. I hope I get them. My gracious. Here we go. What trouble. And I am reading to the end today, no matter how short or how long, we're finishing the book. Okay. Mrs. Twiddle gets cross. Oh, no. Not a way to end the book. No, no, no. Mr. Twiddle sat in his chair reading the newspaper. Mrs. Twiddle sat by the fire knitting. Click, click, click went her needles. Mr. Twiddle sniffed. Mrs. Twiddle didn't say anything, but she looked at him. He sniffed again. Don't, said Mrs. Twiddle. Where's your hanky, Twiddle? Don't know, said Twiddle and sniffed again. But I gave you a clean one this morning, said Mrs. Twiddle. It must be in your pocket. Well, it's not, said Twiddle. I've looked. I must have lost it when I went out for a walk. I remember taking it out once but I don't remember putting it back into my pocket again. Now I shall have to give you another hanky, groaned Mrs. Twiddle. Anyone would think I was made of hankies. We always call them hankies too. Yeah, we did. I'm starved, thirsty, hungry. Help me out, somebody. Oh, so good. No, they wouldn't love, said Twiddle, looking at his plump little wife. Twiddle, I shall have to do something about your hanky, said Mrs. Twiddle, knitting very quickly, as she always did when she was cross. You've lost five this week. Five! Oh, no, dear, said Twiddle. Oh, yes, said Mrs. Twiddle, said, and she rattled her needles loudly. Five. It's got to stop. Next time you go out, I shall pin your hanky inside your umbrella. Then you won't be able to lose it. But it will be awfully difficult to blow my nose if my hanky is pinned inside my umbrella, said Twiddle. No, it won't. You can put your umbrella up and the hanky will unfold and fall down to your nose, said Mrs. Twiddle. You won't be able to leave it behind because it will be pinned to your umbrella. When you've used it, you can just fold up your umbrella and put it down again. But I've got to put my umbrella up every time I want to blow my nose, said Twiddle alarmed. Yes, said Mrs. Twiddle. Then perhaps you'll learn not to lose your hankies. She was good as her word. Next time poor Twiddle went out, Mrs. Twiddle pinned his hanky firmly inside his big umbrella. There, she said. Now you just can't help bringing your hanky home. Oh, 
Goodness gracious. Got to take a little minute here. <clears throat> I catch my breath too. Mr. Twiddle went out, hoping that he wouldn't have to blow his nose the whole afternoon. He couldn't bear the idea of putting up his umbrella every time he wanted to use his hanky. Lucky he didn't want to blow his nose at all. He walked to the paper shop and then he went into the country, meaning to sit on the stile and like and read his paper. He soon came to the style. I guess I don't know what S-T-I-L-E is still, style. He climbed up and opened his newspaper. He hung his umbrella on top of the bar of the style. Then he began to read. The paper was very interesting. Although Mr. Twiddle had read almost exactly the same news in the morning newspaper, it seemed just as interesting when he read it the second time. He read for a long time. That he forgot the time. He sat, he sat. When he at last looked at his watch, he was alarmed to see that it was almost tea time. Now I shall be late for tea, he said, and got off the stile in a great hurry. Good gracious, I must run. So he ran and just got home as Mrs. Twiddle was making the tea. Late as usual, she said, did you have a nice walk? Sit down, tea is ready. Twiddle felt very hot with his hurrying. He panted, his forehead felt wet with heat and he felt in his pocket for his hanky. It wasn't there, of course. So he wiped his forehead with the back of his hand. Mrs. Twiddle saw him. Oh, Twiddle, where are your manners? Wipe your forehead with your hanky. Haven't you got it, said Mrs. Twiddle, filling in all of his pockets again. Well, I pinned it inside your umbrella. Have you forgotten already, said Mrs. Twiddle. Mr. Twiddle got up to get his umbrella, but it wasn't in the hall stand. How extraordinary. It was always there, but now it wasn't. What happened to it? Oh, Mr. Twiddle, I know what happened to it. And then, in an awful shock, Twiddle remembered that he left it behind, hooked to the stile. Yes, he had hooked the handle to the top bar of the stile with his hanky pinned in it, and he had left them both there. Now, what would Mrs. Twiddle say? Perhaps I could pop upstairs and get another hanky before she notices anything. And then after tea, I could see if the umbrella is still on the stile. Thought poor Twiddle, but there wasn't any time to go and get a new hanky because Mrs. Twiddle called out impatiently, Twiddle, what are you doing out there in the hall? Isn't your hanky in the umbrella? Ah, uh, yes, my dear, it is, said Mr. Twiddle, thinking that it certainly must be. Well, bring it in then, said Mrs. Twiddle. You can surely unpin it. Well, uh, yes, love, said Twiddle, wondering how he was going to unpin a hanky from an umbrella that wasn't there. I suppose your big clumsy hands can't undo the pin, called Mrs. Twiddle, getting annoyed. Bring that umbrella here and then I'll unpin the hanky. The scones are all getting cold. Dear, dear, I never knew such a man. Well, that was the worst. That was worse than ever. How could he bring in an umbrella that wasn't there? The umbrella isn't here, called Mr. Twiddle. Why not, called back Mrs. Twiddle, puzzled. Well, I must have left it on the stile, said Mr. Twiddle, not daring to go back into the kitchen. But Mrs. Twiddle at once popped out of the hall. What? You've lost your umbrella now? You just put on your hat and go straight back to the stile and get it. Anyone might take it. So poor Twiddle had to leave his nice tea and go hurrying off to the stile. He was in such a flurry that he didn't notice Mr. Jinx hurrying into the opposite direction, 
carrying his umbrella with him. Mr. Jinx had passed by the stile and had seen the umbrella. He knew it was Mr. Twiddle's, and now he was carrying to take it back. Twiddle didn't hear him calling. He just went panting on, and when he came to the stile, the umbrella wasn't there, of course. So back went poor Twiddle, very much afraid that Mrs. Twiddle would have a great deal to say to him that evening. He was very glad indeed when he saw his umbrella standing in the hall again. Mr. Jinx brought it back, said Mrs. Twiddle. I gave him your scones to eat. Oh my, in return for his kindness, but you can have bread and jam. Now the next day, Twiddle put on his coat to go out and once more took his umbrella, which had his hanky. We're going to go over, I think. Still pinned inside. But Mrs. Twiddle called before he went out. Twiddle, come here for a minute. Are you taking your hanky and your umbrella? Yes, love, said Twiddle. Well, just to make sure you don't lose your umbrella again, I'm going to tie it to your coat sleeve with thread. Oh, remember the mittens that you could, um, the little mittens with elastic that you clipped, where you could put on the cuff of your sleeve and the cuff of the child's coat so they didn't lose them? That's what Mr. Twiddle needs. Miss, Then, even if you do put it down and forget it, it will hang onto your sleeve so you don't leave it behind. There now, that's tightly tied on. Your hanky is pinned to your umbrella and your umbrella is tied to your coat sleeve. You can't possibly lose either of them now. Mr. Twiddle didn't at all like all the pinning and trying, but he didn't dare argue about it. Mrs. Twiddle was so much better at arguing than he was so he sat off looking rather gloomy. He thought he would go and look into and look in to an old friend, Mr. Pito's. Mr. Pito had five children and it was always a jolly house to go to. He arrived at Mr. Pito, Pito's to find him playing an exciting game of rounds with five boys and girls. Now, Mr. Twiddle loved rounders. He loved hitting out at the ball and he liked trying to get someone out. So he joined in the game too. Soon he was feeling very hot for he had his coat on. Take off your coat man for goodness sake, Mr. Pito, who had nothing on but shorts and a vest. So Mr. Twiddle took off his coat and set it and the umbrella over and brought over, over the brow of a tree. Then he joined in the game. The sun came out and everyone got very hot. Lemonade, lemonade, cried Mr. Pito when the game was finished and ice cream. Come on down to the village shop, all of you, and we'll drink lemonade and have ice cream. Mr. Twiddle didn't like lemonade or ice cream. So he went along. He paid for a pink ice cream for everyone. The children thought he was very kind. Mr. Twiddle suddenly heard the village clock strike one. He jumped up. My gracious, I said, I'll be home at half past 12. I must fly. Goodbye. Off he went thinking that it was very funny the way the time went when you're playing games. He came into the door for his house feeling rather late and frustrated. Later again, Mrs. Twiddle, how hot are you? I hope you won't get a chill. A tush, said Twiddle feeling for his hanky. It wasn't there, of course. Oh, poor Mr. Twiddle. Twiddle, you know, your hanky is pinned to your umbrella, said Mrs. Twiddle crossly. Go and get it. Twiddle went out to the hall to get it. His umbrella was not there. Now don't tell me your umbrella isn't there. Twiddle called his wife. I tied it to your coat so you couldn't leave it behind. Then inside for the hanky. Well, my coat isn't there, said Twiddle desperately, nor my umbrella, nor my hanky. Mrs. Twiddle came into the hall with astonishment. 
Well, there is your coat then, she said. Twiddle suddenly remembered. Well, dear, yes, m me, yes. I must have left it hanging on the branch of the tree at Mr. Petto's garden. He said I was hot and I took it off. So the umbrella is there too, and the hanky, of course. Mrs. Twiddle stared at him. Are you doing all this on purpose? Twiddle, she asked sternly. I suppose if I pin your coat to your vest, you'll come home without that too. You are a very annoying man. I shall not speak to you for the rest of the day. This was the kind of punishment that Twiddle really enjoyed because he thought that Mrs. Twiddle spoke far too much, but he pretended to look very sad. After this dinner, Mr. Petro brought back his coat, umbrella, hanky. Mr. Twiddle thanked him very much. If you could come in to tea, you'd better come today, he said, Mr. Petro, because Mrs. Twiddle isn't in, isn't in a speaking mood and he could have a nice quiet time. But oh dear, Twiddle overheard what he said, and that was Mrs. Twiddle overheard what he said, and that was the end of a nice quiet time. Poor Twiddle. He doesn't get himself into trouble, does he? That's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed this book. Mr. Twiddle was a hoot and a half. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that bell on top and it'll give you all notifications when I do an upload. And with me, you never know. Usually it's Monday, T, it's T Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesdays, it's Grammy's DT Meals and Snacks. After that, you never know. Saturday shout out, review, whatever I've got going on. Have a great day. God bless. And we'll be back on Tuesday. Hopefully my book will be in. Bye now. If not, I'll find something else. Have a great day.